Hello, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and today I would like to do some good design work in a system called Onshape. Now, Onshape is uh, online, and your parts live in the, the ether. <laughs> they're not on your on your computer. You know, they're they're in the cloud. And um, there's a bunch of features, and you can do all this stuff in Onshape. And um, I love the price; it's free. Um, I'm doing these uh, videos to help out uh, a group of young students. Um, so my little demo today is going to be the uh, creation of a phone case. And I'm going to take you through through it. And as you can see, I've started up on shape and I have created a what they call a create part studio, a part studio. So um, I created a part. I'm going to do another one, a part studio. Here's a very blank part studio. And when I do this, I can do a rename and I'm going to call this phone case. Phone case. Okay. All right. I know that the phone case has a certain profile. And so I'm going to go to sketch here and I'm going to select the top plane and I'm going to right click. I'm going to say view normal to sketch plane. There you go. And I'm going to start right in with a center point rectangle. So I'm going to click right here on the center and go up like this and out like this. And there is my phone case uh, profile. When I hit the D key, it goes right to the dimensioning tab and the phone case is going to be two inches by 3.5 inches. So I'm just going to do that. 3.5. There we go. And the phone case is a quarter inch thick. <clears throat> so now that I have the initial sketch, I'm clicking on the little check mark to finish my uh, sketch. And with my right mouse button, I'm pulling this view um, into an isometric view. Um, as you can see up here, there's this nice little, um, this nice little cube with these little faces on it. And if I click on front plane, it does that. If I click on top plane, it does that. If I click on this little area of the, of the cube with the little things missing, it does that. So that's a very, very nice way to orient my views. If I hold my middle mouse button and right mouse button down, it pans. And then I can go up to this extrude button. The extrude button gives you a choice between solid, surface, and thin. I want a solid. And all I've got to do is click in the region, and it gives me an extrusion, which I can um, edit the height of. I want 0.25. There we go. And I say green check mark to stop. Uh, next, I want to fillet the corners, and the filleting of the corners uh, can be controlled by a conic or a distance. I'm going to go with a conic with an RHO value, and uh, the conic with the RHO value uh, gives you a much better look when your RHO is 0.65. The uh, radius does not happen so abruptly at the edges, so I'll show you. That when I, I'm going to exaggerate, I'm going to say 0.9. And what you can see now is that the radius starts all the way over here, but doesn't really curve till there. Well, that, in my view, just by my experience, is not as appealing as an RHO of 0.65. And I'm going to have, and that's going to be based on a radius of 0.25. So there you have it. Next, um, I'm going to shell with my 0.05. There we go. And now I'm going to work the corners with a regular, uh, a regular radius. And I'm going to put uh, 0 0.025 in there to start with. There we go. And green check mark. So that's that. And now I'm going to radius the outside. I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. So. I'm doing those edges and I'll do 0 0.05 and I'll do a conic. Oops. Let's do a conic radius with 0 0.065 row. And that worked. Now, the cross section of this might be a little weird. So I'm going to go in and say section view and I'm going to select this plane right here. And now I'm seeing, oh yeah, that's pretty good. That works just fine. Incidentally, when I do a section view, I can move it back and forth like that. I can start rotating it this way. I can rotate it this way by grabbing these little 
edges. And that to me is a very important um, design technique. So good. Uh, the next thing I want to do is put a little uh, buttonhole here and a little hole right up here for the camera. And so I'm going to sketch on a flat plane. I'm going to select the plane uh, like so. I'm going to uh, view normal to sketch plane. There we go. And now I'm going to use something called a slot. In order to do this slot, I'm going to put a single line segment there. I don't really want this line to be a solid line. So I'm going to select on it and I'm going to say construction. So that turns it into a construction line. I'm going to put a dimension on here first. Okay, let's make this, um, let's make this 0.3. When I hit the D key, I get the dimension function. So from there to there, that's also going to be 0.3. Let's dimension it from here to here. Let's call that 0.125. It's roughly, it's in the middle. Uh, let's go back to the slot command. Let's do that. Okay. Let's put in 0.06 and enter. And now we have the slot for the buttonhole. Great. So we finish that sketch. We go to extrude. We select the on the inside region of this. Now, when you're doing a solid, you can do a new solid, you can add or you can remove. So what we're doing is removing. And when you hover over these regions, it's going to remove the regions that we're hovering. So I want to hover right in here. And as soon as I select, it does that. Now this is extruding a certain distance. It's not necessarily extruding the length of the wall. And so uh, I can just accept what I have. That's a blind extrude. Or I can do up to next. So now, no matter how thick I make this wall, the little buttonhole slot will always be good. And I want to put a 0 0.01 chamfer on that hole, on the edge of that hole. So I select one edge, and it's smart enough to go all the way tangent through and select all of those. So now I've got a nice little buttonhole. Perfect. I want to have a um, hole for the camera right up here. So again, I'm just going to go to the sketcher. I'm going to select that face. I'm going to, I don't have to do this. I don't have to view normal to sketch plane, but you know, it makes it more convenient. Um, I'm going to do a rectangular hole with fillets on this one. So I'm going to say that I want a corner rectangle and the rectangle goes like this. Good. It's a good start. And I'm going to do sketch fillet. So I'm going to pop that in like this. Um, I'm going to give it, um, yeah, 0 0.06, 0 0.06 there. Upon hitting the D key, I can select from edge to here. I'm going to call that 0.2. I'm going to select from this edge to there. Uh, dimension, edge to edge, 0.2. Beautiful. And now I can finish the sketch. Uh, once I finish the sketch, I go back to extrude. I select that region. I'm doing a remove. It's smart enough to go the, the correct direction. And I'm going to, again, do up to next and uh, green check mark. There's nothing that holds the phone in, though, um, on these edges. So I want to give it a little lip. And in order to do the lip, I think the sweep will give me the best chance of um, doing that. And so I'm going to make a plane for reasons that will become uh, really obvious in a moment and I'm going to do a point and normal plane and I'm going to select this point right here and this edge is the normal and say green check mark. So I have made a plane you can see it right there that is at that little point right there and uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to sketch on that plane it's called plane one so I'm going to say sketch select the plane Good. Right mouse button, view normal to plane, zoom up a bit, 
and I'm going to now make a profile of a lip and my profile is going to start with a three-point arc. I'm going to start the arc here. I'm going to go out here like this there just like that. You notice when I moved it just right it became tangent with um, this edge so that was great. Um, I'm going to do a vertical alignment between those two points which means that sticks straight up when I rotate this over it's going to be perfect and I'm going to add for giggles a profile that goes from here I'm going to I'm going to put a three-point arc here's your three-point arc that goes from here to about here I move this so it's tangent good um, I'm going to use my concentric constraint between these two um, wait a second. Let's put a radius. Let's hit the D key and put a radius here first. I think 0 0.01 will be perfect. And now when I do the concentric, it won't collapse in a way that is untoward. And I'm going to do a vertical alignment between these two points. And I'm going to do a line segment that goes from there to there. So this is defining my lip. And I'm going to fill out the sketch. There we go. Point zero two. Good. Finish. And the sweep does what we want. So that's the voice of experience. Lots of times when you can't get something accomplished one way, you have to come. And I'm done with that sketch. Having been done with that sketch, I'm going to use a sweep and I'm going to select the curves of that little sketch that I made and I'm going to do sweep path and I'm going to grab edge, edge, edge. And the sweep does what we want. Uh, let's see what else we need to finish it off by creating a little uh, chamfer. I want to chamfer this edge right there and I want it to go all the way around. It says tangent propagation so it does that as it should. I like it. Okay that's a nice phone case. I don't like the color and so I'm going to go to my appearance panel and I'm going to do I'm selecting part one and I'm going to edit the appearance. It comes up with a better color. I like the purple green check mark. Okay, let's get rid of that. Oops. Click on here and get rid of that. All right, so that's a happen in phone case. And um, finally, um, I think I'll put a knob on the back, just so you could see the revolve command. Okay, the phone case is looking pretty good. Uh, and in order to do the revolve, I'm going to do a sketch. And I'm going to sketch on the right plane. And I'm going to view normal to sketch and I'm going to use this edge uh, or this center datum plane as my revolve axis uh, in uh, on shape. I don't have to I don't have to sketch an actual revolve axis. I can just select one of the edges or one of the lines of my profile. So I'm going to make a profile that looks like this, looks like this, looks like this. I'm going to do a uh, three-point arc from there to there and I'm just going to pull it up like that. This is meant to have your finger under it and I'm going to do a little line segment. It goes like that and I'm going to hit the H key which brings me to the uh, horizontal constraint and when I hit the V key you can see it brings me to the vertical constraint and when I hit the um, let's see, I want um, coincident. It's an I. I want that coincident with that. Beautiful. And I want that coincident with that. Uh, a coincident constraint cannot be applied to two curves of different types, it says. 
that's okay, where there's a will, there's a way, because there's a little origin point there. So I'm going to say coincidence between that and that. All right, and now I'm going to hit the D key to, to do my dimensions. And I would like to have that 0.75. I would like to have this 0.125. I would like to have... Uh, I'd like to have a dimension. I'd like this to go straight in. So I'm going to do a perpendicularity between this one and nope, nope, nope. I'm going to do a little reference line. So I'm going to push it off like that until it's tangent. Good. And then I'm going to do a perpendicularity between this and this. There we go. And finally, I'm going to do one more dimension over here. It's going to be 0.375. And I've got to finish up with a dimension over here that I'm going to call 0.3. So there's the, uh, there's the knob that I was referring to, or there's the shape of the knob. And uh, now I can go to the revolve command. Revolve, the shape is still selected from before. I select this as the revolve axis. And this one is going to be a new, meaning it's not connected to the actual foam. All right. So there is my phone case with my optional knob. I don't think that would be so easy to get my fingers under, but you get the idea. Also, it would be sharp, so I'll, I'll hit it with a blend. As a matter of fact, there's a nice blend called a face blend. I'm sorry. There's a nice fillet that I want to do a full round, a full round. So I don't want this corner or that corner. I want the radius that makes a perfect uh, transition between that flat face on the top and the curved face on the bottom. So that is a full round fillet. And what I do is I select the first side first. I select the second side second, and I select the middle side third. And uh, on shape is smart enough to round that off perfectly. And there you go. And that is my finished phone case. And I hope you learned a lot from watching this video. It's kind of organic. It's, um, you know, the kind of shape that you might want. Um, I am going to hide the planes so that you can see it a little better. See, right? Like that. When you uh, click on these planes, there's a little eye thing and you can hide them like that. Uh, and there you have it. It's the, the phone case. Uh, again, my name is Steve Samuel uh, from Design Visionaries. I'm going to be doing a few more of these videos. Um, I'm going to probably provide a course before long, and I hope you've appreciated this little tutorial. Um, please like and subscribe. There's going to be more of this available. Um, and thank you very much for your viewership.